everybody to this absolutely extraordinary bill signing. My name is Lisbeth Heyer, and I'm president of Two Life Communities. And in case there's any doubt in this room, this is Amy Shackman, <laughs> Two Life CEO. <laughs> Amy and I could not be more thrilled to welcome you to Two Life's Golden My Ear House to celebrate this historic Affordable Homes Act becoming law. By way of example of what this bill can do, there is no better example than the room you are sitting in and the building you are visiting today. More than three, thank you. <laughs> More than 300 older adults call Golda Meir House home. And with the support of many of you here today, our residents have the opportunity to thrive in a dynamic and supportive community and to have many new friends as part of their family and a staff who believes in and supports their hopes and dreams for aging well. And now, thanks to the Affordable Home Act, countless more individuals and families across the state will have an affordable place to call home. Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, and Secretary Augustus, Chairs Edwards and Arciero, thank you for your inspiring leadership and huge congratulations on this monumental bill signing. And to all of our elected officials here today, to the housing advocates in the room, our allies, and our friends, thank you all for your tireless work to make this absolutely fabulous day possible and to end our state's affordable housing crisis. It is now time for someone who needs no introduction around here in Newton. Please join me in welcoming our longtime friend and our affordable champion, the Newton Mayor, Ruth Ann Fuller. Good morning, everybody. It's a great morning, isn't it? Um, I am truly excited to welcome our governor, our lieutenant governor, and two secretaries, Secretary Augustus and Secre that was not about you. <laughs> Secretary Gorskowitz here to Newton to officially sign the Affordable Housing Act. So this much needed landmark legislation will make housing here in Massachusetts more available, more af af affordable, more accessible and more up to date. And it is especially fitting and proper that the ceremony is being held here at Golden Meyer House. <laughs> it allows us to shine a very bright light on the amazing work being done by Two Life Communities. Amy, Lisbeth, and the team literally win the gold medal, I wish I had one, <laughs> for creating quality, innovative, supportive, and affordable housing, not just in Newton, but in greater Boston. Um, they are partners and role models for how the feds, the state, cities and towns and nonprofits work together to create broadly affordable housing that meets the needs of older adults. They're amazing to two life. <laughs> so across the state, in the governor's office, in the secretariats, at the State House, supporting our state reps and state senators, 
and in every one of our 351 cities and towns, we have talented, dedicated, forward-looking staff who transform our housing goals into laws and ordinances and zoning and financing and ultimately into homes. I want to take a moment to thank these people who are on the front lines and I want to take the opportunity to give a shout out in particular to the person in Newton who heads our planning department. I see him right there. I want to thank Barney Heath. I now have the honor of introducing Governor Healy, who with her partner, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, have shown unwavering commitment, razor sharp clarity, and courageous leadership because it takes courage to do housing. Isn't that amazing that it does? But it does. And she has led us in creating the housing we need. If our young parents are older residents, our students graduating from colleges and universities, and our teachers and police officers cannot find or afford housing, then our Commonwealth cannot thrive. Thank you, Governor Healy, for this historic legislation. Great. You're amazing. Woo! Um, thank you so much, Mayor. It is awesome to be here this morning with all of you. It truly is a team effort. And, you know, when, when the LG and I uh, started about 18 months ago, we said we committed to housing as our top priority. We recognized that we entered office short a couple hundred thousand housing units statewide, housing across a range of income levels. And we said that this is something that is going to hold us back as a state. We're a great state with so much going for us. But fundamentally, we know we need housing. We need housing for students who are graduating from our great colleges and universities, for seniors who are looking to downsize, for first time home buyers, and for honest to God, everyday, ordinary, wonderful Massachusetts residents who need housing. So we set a goal, we set a really high mark. We, through the work of Secretary Augustus, established the first ever Secretariat of Housing and Livable Communities. We, because the nature of this problem demanded that kind of focus and urgency. And I want to thank Secretary Augustus, I want to thank Undersecretary Maddox, I want to thank Kate Racer, I want to thank our partners across government, Sheila Dillon's here from the city of Boston, you know, um, to Eric Schulpen, who we stole from uh, Chapa. <laughs> and so, so, and of course, Nico, who said to, too. we stole Nico from, <laughs> from some other person, um, you know, it's just to say it was a team effort. A team effort, Secretary Gorkowitz is here from ANF, Crystal Cornegay is here from Mass Housing. We put our whole team into this, and um, it came about because of the true partnership reflected in this room. There are people, I'm looking out, I'm like, amazing. We got, we got people from all sectors in Massachusetts, right? And we've got developers, and we've got labor leaders, we've got employers who are major economic cogs from our colleges and universities, from our healthcare and our hospital institutions. You know, we've got leaders of our business associations, and we've got leaders of, of senior organizations. Um, we've got GBIO. It's just to say, like, everybody, everybody can get behind housing. And that's what this, this legislation represents. So, you know, as I begin, I just want to thank Mayor Fuller, members of the Newton City Council, everyone at Golden Meir House today for welcoming us in. It's a great morning for Massachusetts because today we are signing 
the largest investment in housing in our state's history, $5.2 billion. Awesome. Um, you know, this happens because of uh, uh, so many things. Um, you know, I want to I want to thank our legislators who have been so hard at work um, on this and any number of other issues on behalf of the nearly seven million residents in our great state. And so, to Chair Senator Lydia Edwards and to Chair Rep Jim Arciero, thank you for your work, particularly through the conference committee. Um, I know we are joined by so many champions in the legislature. I see Rep. Kevin Honan, who's been at housing for a long time. Rep. Rep. Michael Conley. Rep. Andy Vargas. Rep. Councillor Marilyn Devaney. Um, and of course, from Newton's own, our dear beloved friends, Representative Kay Khan and Representative Ruth Balzer. Isn't it? Yes. And we're signing wage equity later on today. Yeah. Thank you, legislature. Yeah. You know, um, we've got municipal leaders who are really where the rubber meets the road every day, you know, trying to get this done and, uh, and, and deliver. And I just want to thank everybody who is, who is here. I know the LG will uh, acknowledge everybody who's here, but you are all champions across the board in helping to shape our advocacy and further our advocacy and tell us what really needed to be in this legislation, right? Because it's not just about a number. There's a lot of policy in this, in this important piece of legislation. And the key with the policy is what are the strategies to unlock production? Because we've got to bring more units online as quickly as possible. So to all of our wonderful municipal leaders, our town administrators, all the planning folks, you guys are awesome, and thank you for helping us bring this home. Yeah. I'm going to leave that there for you. Yeah, um, you. <laughs> all right, uh, housing champions, right? Uh, mass housing, CHAPA, MAHA, abundant housing, our public housing residents and officials. Yeah. Our leaders on equity and economic justice, Nicole Obi from BECMA, the chairs of our Latino and Black Empowerment Councils, Josiane Martinez, Gladys Vega, Tanisha Sullivan, and Tony Richards. Thank you guys for all you do. I want to thank our labor leaders who represent the men and women who are building the housing for all of us and who also need homes that they can afford themselves, right? And so to uh, Joe Byrne of the Carpenters, to Frank Callahan of the Building Trades, Carlos Aramayo of Local 26, there are other labor leaders in the room. Thank you so much for your partnership with our administration. We're going to create a lot of great jobs. And we have an additional announcement today. Secretary Augustus and his team worked their tails off over the weekend um, <laughs> to finalize guidance that will ensure that affordable housing developments funded by many of the capital authorizations in this bill will be built by responsible contractors who treat their workers right. state where we can be pro-growth and pro-worker all at the same time. Amen. So all of us, you know, are grateful to, to so many who came together, to the developers, okay? The guys and the, and the women who need to make the math work on all of this, thank you for helping us see our way through to what needed to happen. From market to nonprofit to CDCs, you are all critical partners in turning new investments into new homes. 
to the business leaders, and we're going to need you as we go forward every single step of the way to the development community. To our business leaders who have said to us time and time again, the number one issue for recruiting and retaining and growing great talent in this state is being able to house people, right? People need to be able to afford a home and to keep the workforce we need to drive the economy. So I thank members of our business community and healthcare leaders who are here today who know that housing costs and housing quality is a di direct determinant of health across Massachusetts. Thank you for being here. You know, we set up a lot of steering committees and subcommittees and working councils. Really, you guys, there's a lot of people that did a ton of work over the last 18 months so that we landed, all of us, our administration and our legislature in a really, really great place. So I want to thank everybody for the time spent and meeting after meeting, Zoom after Zoom. And I want to thank the people. Uh, yeah, and we, ha we want to, no, you're not done yet because now we've got to build it. But um, people from around this state, I mean, you know, whether you were in Gardner or East Hampton or Salem, I mean, people gathered for hearings about what was needed in their community. Look, I just say this, you know, Massachusetts, just to remind everyone, we are number one in schools and education. We are number one in health care. We are number one. If you want, if you're a woman and you want to live in any state in the country, Massachusetts is the state to live in. We are, those aren't just my words, that's what, surveys say. We're number one for innovation and entrepreneurship. We're a state that leads in freedom and equality. But we know if you can't afford rent, if you can't afford a mortgage, you can't afford to live here. And that's not right. So we brought everybody together to do something about it. Affordable Homes Act, which is what we're serving up today. These are homes for teachers and nurses, homes for EMTs and firefighters, homes for medical assistants and restaurant servers, engineers, small business owners, homes for people who keep our community strong and growing. It creates homes for every kind of household at every, sorry, at every stage of life. Seniors who want to downsize in their own communities, public housing residents who deserve a home they can be proud of, veterans, where's Doug? Veterans. Right? Who have, who have earned a safe home in our communities. Um, I'm going to be quiet and turn it over to LG, but look, we are. <laughs> We could talk more about the ADUs, you know, and you guys know from the press release, this is big stuff. We're unlocking tens of thousands of housing units. We're expanding the tax credit for rehabbing historic buildings, creating seasonal community designations, get 49 different policy tools to make housing more affordable, more accessible, and bottom line, more available across our state. Look, this legislation is gonna help everyone. So I wanna thank Speaker Mariano, Senate President Spilka, again, Chairs Edward, Edwards and our CRO, members of the legislature for working to get this done. It's a really big deal. It's a really great day. It's just a start. There's more to do, um, but we are all intent and uh, focused on getting after it in this next stage. So I'm gonna bring forward our champion of housing, um, a woman we are all so fortunate to work with and for me to serve alongside, that's our fabulous Lieutenant Governor, yeah. Kim Driscoll. Yeah. Thanks everyone. Thanks everyone. Hey, what a great day. Like you could not be in a bad mood even if the weather's not cooperating. This is amazing. We are definitely breaking some fire codes for a good reason though, all right? Um, just kidding, we're not, we're not, really. Um, like I, um, <laughs> I want to amplify everything the governor said, like plus one on all of the partners that came together to make this happen and really want to express gratitude to you. Like this is a housing issue that is hard to solve and it's self-created. And there are lots of like intractable problems in government and this isn't one of them. But it takes leadership and it takes a sense of urgency and a willingness to say, like, I'm going to tackle this. And that's what we have in Governor Healy, who said from day one, I'm going to do this.
say that as someone who's got the scars on the back of trying to build housing in my community. And so I'm really grateful that so many of our mayors are here. Mayor LaChapelle from East Hampton, Mayor Pangala from a little city called Salem, um, <laughs> Mayor Keefe from Revere, Mayor Ballantyne from Somerville, Mayor Longo Cohn from Medford, Mayor Nicholson from Gardner, Mayor Sullivan from Brockton. We've got a number of local officials that are here uh, from Franklin to, to Lexington. So many local leaders have stepped up and have been willing to say in their communities, yes to housing, yes to figuring out how to get it done, yes to the hard work of uh, taking on the battles that it can be. And I hope through this bill, we've made those battles a little bit easier because we're also aiming all of, arming all of you with tools and the capacity to see the good and leaning in to this work uh, with whatever bully pulpit we have to say, pro-housing is pro-community. That's that simple. <laughs> So I just want to thank all of our colleagues who have worked on this, the team at HLC, long hours, late nights, trying to get it right, really trying to be thoughtful. Obviously our legislative leaders who really had a late night trying to get this done. Um, and this is, is it's definitely truly a historic milestone. Um, I've had the good fortune to work in the city of Chelsea, the city of Beverly, the city of Salem, and to be in this role and to see 5.2 billion, like with a B, a billion here, a billion there, pretty soon it's real money, right? Um, to see this incredible investment, um, you know, as a commonwealth, we spent four decades not building enough homes, you know, watching this housing shortage grow deeper. We all know why land's expensive, zoning is tough, interest rates are up. Um, we understand the reasons, but this bill is a turning point. Like, I think it's us saying we're just done admiring the problem. We're going to get to work to fix it. And that's all of you. That's why this room is packed, because everyone who was here supports housing, knows how critical it is, and wants to roll up their sleeves and do something about it. The governor talked about implementation, and she is exactly right. This is the first step. This is something we've been working on while the legislation advanced. Back in October, when we filed the Affordable Homes Act, the governor also signed three executive orders to get the work moving. A housing advisory council to develop a statewide housing plan. I get to chair that. An unlocking housing production commission, Ed gets to chair that. That's going to develop recommendations for streamlining production. It's not enough just to have resources. We've got to figure out how to do it better. And then an order directing state agencies to expand our inventory of state-owned land that could be used for housing. How do we leverage the tools and assets we have? We're not growing more land. We've got to use what we have better and more effectively. All of this work is ongoing. It's putting us in a position to more effectively and more equitably create the homes that this <coughs> legislation will help fund and unlock. The Affordable Homes Act itself does more. It authorizes 5.2 billion B with a B in affordable homes, first time home buyers, climate friendly new housing. It not only takes the 23 unprecedented policy steps to unblock housing production and ease market pressures, it also creates strong bodies to help get the work done right. An accessible housing commission to study accessibility and housing for people with disabilities and seniors. An extremely low income commission to recommend policy programs and other investments to exp expand the supply of housing for folks who earn less than 30% of AMI, a very median income, really important. <laughs> yeah. And one more, a senior housing commission to recommend policies, programs, and other investments to expand the supply of housing for seniors, just like this one here. The governor, yeah. The governor and I are going to sign up now, so like in 10 years we can get into this place. That's our, that's one of the things we're going to work on. Um, so we know when experts and stakeholders come together in rooms, hashing these things out, it doesn't sound very exciting. Um, but actually, that's what's going to help us create the policies we need to do the work that creates spaces like this and so many others. The housing working group that the governor appointed and, and I chair started the day after we took office. That's the body that led to the Affordable Homes Act. Many of you were a part of that effort that said we can craft something big. We can put something together. Ed and his team were a big part of that. I just want to say kudos. Another former local official, just for the record, doing the work on the ground, getting it done. We've got this bill, it's the vehicle that's going to move us forward. There's no telling how far we can go. So I'm just so grateful for everyone here. And as I hand it off to Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities, who is doing an amazing job, as I look around the room, 
Like, this is a problem we can solve. There's no cavalry coming from Washington or someplace else. Like, we're the cavalry that's going to get this done for Massachusetts. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Thank you, Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll. It's been my privilege to stand with you today to celebrate this most significant housing legislation in Massachusetts history. And I have to say, I'm reminded of that moment a number of years ago when then Vice President Biden turned to President Obama when he was getting ready to sign the Affordable Care Act. This is a BFD. <laughs> I still have a job after that. <laughs> oh. I wanted to take a moment to just say how fortunate we are uh, to have a governor and a lieutenant governor who understand the fundamental issues facing Massachusetts residents. And not only do they understand them, they go all in to bring big, bold solutions to the table. I also want to recognize the two chairs uh, of the Joint Committee on Housing. Uh, Representative Asiero and Senator Edwards, and for all the members of the committee. Uh, they, along with many folks in this room, were part of that 11-hour marathon hearing that was held, uh, which really, I think, uh, demonstrates the passion and the commitment of all the folks. And they stayed there for every minute of that testimony. Uh, they heard every voice uh, that was shared uh, that showed up at that hearing. Um, this has been an incredibly collaborative process. Uh, you both uh, have shown us when we all work together to solve problems, we can, we can move mountains. I want to thank you both for your passion, intelligence, and friendship. I also want to thank uh, my team at the Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities. Yeah. Yeah. As a secretariat, we are only a little over a year old, but in that time, they have done incredible work. You created a monumental housing bill and effectively communicated and advocated for it. I especially want to acknowledge Nico Mendoza, my chief of staff. <laughs> Eric Schupen, our yeah. chief of policy. <laughs> and Laura Palladino, our legislative director. But if all of the HLC team will just raise your hand and just take a round of applause, because every one of them. <laughs> As has been mentioned, gathered here today is an incredible coalition of partners, the likes of which many would not have imagined. From business leaders to tenant advocates, public housing authorities, disability advocates, organized labor, and, and housing advocates. That's just a few of the nearly 50 organizations that are united to bring relief to those impacted by the housing crisis. Today is testament to what can be done when we identify a common challenge and come together in good faith to meet it. This year marks the 80 years since President Franklin Delano Roosevelt declared a second Bill of Rights in his State of the Union address to Congress. That Bill of Rights included the right to every family to a decent home. Yeah. Nearly a century later, we still strive to realize that dream. Not just the right for wealthy families, not just the right for white families, not just the right for privileged families, but for everyone. Today, Today, we take a mighty step toward forward 
in delivering on that promise. The Affordable Homes Act is an investment in the future of Massachusetts. It's an investment in our young people we want to keep here. It's an investment in our talented workers who deserve a decent home they can afford. It's an investment in our families and it's an investment in our seniors whose experience and contributions enrich us and who deserve to live out their lives in dignity here in Massachusetts. A home is a foundation on which every person, regardless of income, race, creed, or orientation, can construct their own American dream. The Affordable Homes Act directly delivers solutions we know work. We can draw a straight line from our high cost of housing to the issue of supply and demand. By building and preserving more housing, we can lower costs for Massachusetts residents. With the signing of this bill, the governor signs into law 49 policy initiatives to unlock housing and set up the right path for a more equitable future for us all. From eviction record ceiling to the creation of an office of fair housing. Improving housing, public housing, to incentivizing private development. Opportunities for new home ownership and life for old office spaces and commercial buildings. More multifamily housing, more affordable housing, more homes for veterans, ADUs and supportive housing. From this moment on, accessory dwelling units under 900 square feet can now be built by right in Massachusetts. And by creating a seasonal communities designation, we take a big first step in addressing the unique challenges facing our tourism com communities. Because the people who clean our hotel rooms, prepare and serve our food, and make Massachusetts a destination deserve to be able to live in the communities they work in. This administration is fiercely working on all fronts to drive down costs and to put power back into the hands of tenants and home buyers. Investments in affordable housing are also one of our most powerful tools in addressing homelessness. Across 177 communities, we have witnessed historic zoning reforms taking place uh, as part of the MBTA Communities Law. Dozens of cities and towns have now removed barriers to building housing. They too want their children and grandchildren to be able to live in their hometowns. When the governor reauthorized and increased the low income housing tax credits and the housing development incentive program early last year, she supercharged some of the most powerful incentives to create new homes. Make no mistake, the Healy Driscoll administration has already built a robust housing agenda and this is just year one. <laughs> In Paris Sunday, Northampton Zone two-time Olympic gold medal winner Gabby Thomas uh, came in first in the women's 200-meter semifinals. Today she sets its heads into the finals as the fastest woman in the 200-meter this year. This kind of success takes grit, determination, and a whole lot of training. We know about this here in Massachusetts. Like Gabby and the rest of our Olympians, we spent years training for this. We know what we need to do, and the Affordable Homes Act gives us the tools to do it. We celebrate one victory today, but the starter pistol has just fired. Today is just the beginning. So it's now, now it's my honor to introduce half of the dynamic duo who got this <laughs> bill done in the Housing Committee, Senator Lydia Edwards. Yeah. Good 
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I am uh, elated and very emotional, so you'll have to excuse me at some times. Um, but I want to first get my thank yous out. Uh, my first thank you is to, is to Madam President. That sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> Karen Spilka of the Senate. I want to thank her for uh, taking a chance uh, and giving an opportunity to lead and learn to a freshman senator uh, to be a, a chair of the Housing Committee when one of the largest pieces of legislation was going to come down the pipeline. I'm, I'm grateful for this opportunity. I, um, I want to also thank the, uh, as I call them, the first responders of the housing crisis, uh, the shelter workers. Yeah. I want to thank, they are nameless. They are nameless, but the work that they do every day, they see the result of policy that doesn't quite meet the mark. They see the combination of whether it's addiction, whether it's homelessness, domestic violence, and they see all of that, and at the core of their work is trying to find a home, a place for people to belong. So to the shelter workers, to the organizers on the street knocking on doors, uh, to the Homes for All Coalition, to the legal services attorneys, uh, from Greater Boston Legal Services to MLRI to so many organizations that are the, they are the first responders. They are the first responders of the housing crisis. They see it at its most extreme. And they are part of this team and they were part of building this bill as well. And it's important that we recognize all of them as well. I want to also thank um, my staff um, from Christiana, my legislative director, and Eric uh, Reidecker, he's here as well from Winthrop, but I had to call them out. There hasn't been a crazy idea that I've had or thought or policy or anything that they haven't said ready to go. And I, I thank you so much. Um, and um, finally, I, I also want to just acknowledge um, that today is not just a day of celebration. We're not saying mission accomplished. We're saying mission is clear. Resources getting ready. Team is assembling. Because at the end of the day, we don't forget people sleeping outside. We don't, we don't forget about the people in Mass and Cass. We don't forget about the people who are at the airport. We don't forget about people working two and three jobs and watching their rent go up. We have not forgotten you. And that's, I don't want anyone to see this crowd of people celebrating and thinking mission is accomplished. Absolutely not. We were all just committed to all of you who are watching. We're going to continue to fight. We're in this fight with you. No matter how many times, no matter how many times people try to challenge our moral center, they try to challenge whether we should give up the right to shelter in this state. Instead, thank you to your leadership, Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, thank you to your leadership, the moral arc of our state leads even leans even further into housing justice. Thank you for that. We do not apologize for wanting to do good things here. We do not apologize for wanting to make sure this is a state for all, no matter where you come from, the accent that you speak in, whether you have documents, whether you are a union worker, whether you come from a Michigan, <laughs> whether you, whether you, uh, whether you have, are a child on free lunch, whether you are wondering how you're going to pay your bills, this is your home, and we're going to make sure that you stay here. That's what we do. Big things. Big things. So just to note, some of the big course correction, and that's what I've been trying to emphasize to a lot of people, this is a course correction in our housing policy in our pathway toward justice. This is a course correction when we're talking about zoning, starting to right size and start to push and remove some of the red tape. It's a course correction when it comes to acknowledging and reflecting on the racial discrimination and segregation in our housing. And we have set up an office that is dedicated to that for the first time. Thank you so much for your leadership, Secretary Augustus. Thank you so much. This is a course correction in production. This is a course correction in making sure all of the workers are part of the production are paid what they deserve and are paid a living wage. This is a course correction for labor. It's a course correction for developers. It's a course correction for landlords and tenants. We have not forgotten anyone because everyone needs a home. And I am grateful, incredibly grateful, 
for the opportunity to be part of this moment in history and to add whatever little two cents I could to make sure that we're standing here today. Um, but I want to give a shout out and a fist bump to my co-chair, <laughs> Jim. <laughs> Rep Arcerio, who will be coming up shortly, um, I have to say also thank you to you and your staff um, for your uh, sense of humor, more importantly, uh, sense of patience when I, am, uh, when I was all over the place wondering how things are going to happen. And um, honestly, I couldn't have thought of a better person to work with on this moment in history. I'm grateful for your friendship, grateful for your mentorship. Everyone, Representative Jim Arcero. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. I, I must admit, uh, as a member of the legislature, I've, I'm trying to get my bearings from last week a little bit still. <laughs> and so, you know, as the chair on the House side of, of the Joint Committee on Housing, I'm looking around the room and I'm having PTSDs about the 11 and a half hour hearing. <laughs> or is it 9.30 in the morning where we voted for the largest increase in the, in the history of the Caldwell for housing? <laughs> this, um, this legislation is the first major, crucial step needed in addressing uh, our current housing crisis. It reduces barriers for individuals seeking affordable home options. It increases housing production and inventory. It creates more tools in the toolbox to help cities and towns offer more affordable housing options. The bill, in, the bill invests a record $2 billion into our state's public housing portfolio. <laughs> Especially, especially post-pandemic, we see the, the overdue investments uh, and maintenance that were so critical to ensure that our seniors, our veterans, Doug, you're my constituent, I see you back there. <laughs> our veterans, our disabled neighbors, our loved ones have a reliable place to call home. In this bill, we established the Housing Works Program for municipalities, I know there's a lot of mayors and town managers and people in the public space on the local level that, that work hand in hand with the administration. This is gonna be able to do that to realize housing projects throughout the Commonwealth, to dedicate this grant money just for housing. We allow ADUs by right. <laughs> Little shout out to Andy Vargas for all the work you've done over the years on this. And if I don't do this right now, the social housing program, Mike Conley, you gotta get a shout out. If I don't give you a shout out, I'm gonna be hearing about it. Our ADUs, so our disabled brothers and sisters, have the ability to stay with their loved ones that are young people just starting out in life. Um, that people and families can stay and age in place and where they are. Um, we're thinking outside the box to create more housing. In my district, uh, I, I represent the, the towns of Chelmsford, Littleton, and Westford. We have one of the largest projects in the, uh, in the Commonwealth right now, taking over the IBM commercial space, 500,000 square feet. We've worked with the administration hand in hand. We're building 1,400 new mixed use. <laughs> and in this bill, we have a commercial conversion tax credit for developers to build, to be incentivized to build as well as the sustainable green housing initiatives to provide uh, grant monies and also uh, other incentives for communities to do so. I'm so proud of this bill. Uh, it showcases critical input from our state and local officials, community stakeholders, advocates and residents from Cape Card to Berkshires. It demonstrates our collective work from housing tours, from hours of hearings and testimonies, countless meetings. Everyone, everyone in this room and across the Commonwealth has made a stamp on this historic bill. And we'll all have a shared responsibility now to see it through. I'd like to thank uh, Governor Healy, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, and their team for their vision and partnership. I'd particularly like to thank Secretary Augustus and his team for their help and counsel along the way. There's a lot of phone calls, I know. <laughs> all the way up till 921. <laughs> 930 we passed it, I think, something like that. I'd like to thank, uh, of course, um, Speaker Ron Mariano and Chair uh, of the House Ways and Means Committee, Aaron Michaelowitz. Um,
for their leadership and for trusting me uh, on the House side to help this historical piece of legislation. I'd like to thank my uh, Senate co-chair on the Joint Committee on Housing, State Senator Lydia Edwards. When I started this committee four years ago, it was a complete blank canvas, just going to say, on the housing space. As legislators, um, we all have to be generalists in, in a lot of ways, and it takes a long time to do the work that you guys are doing right now. It takes a long time to get up to speed, and Senator Edwards, with all of your background and the things you've done on the municipal level, was just a, a wonderful partner and someone I couldn't ask for uh, for a better co-chair, Senator Edwards. <laughs> Senator, uh, Senate Pro Tem, Will Brownsberger. Uh, Will, Will is one of the lead conferees getting things done for your collaborative spirit throughout this process. Um, but we are here today to celebrate this historic achievement. Uh, by no means is this an ending point. It's a beginning. Uh, we need to keep this momentum uh, going and remain vigilant as we move forward and continue to create affordable housing options for the people of the Commonwealth. Let us celebrate today and continue the work tomorrow. We still have a lot, a lot of work to do. Thank you. I'd now like to introduce uh, one of our local champions, Mercedes Islam. Mercedes. For all the great work that you do on the local level, uh, really, honestly, helping everybody here get up to speed on this bill and what needs to be passed. Thank you so much for Thank your work. You. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Wow. Good morning. I am so honored to be here. My name is Mercedes, and I've lived here at the Golden Meyer House for almost a year. August 29th will be a year. It might surprise you to see me here, a 52-year-old woman talking to you about senior housing. I'm not a senior, yet. <laughs> but my five kids and 10 grandbabies, they think I'm a dinosaur. <laughs> so maybe it depends on who you ask. I still can't believe my luck moving here to the Golda through a special program for people experiencing homelessness. I went from living in a woman's shelter in, in Waltham to entering this beautiful community. I was nervous at first. I didn't know what to expect. But what I found is a community of kind, generous people who love, who love because of the love that they have for their home here. From the lunches, to my beautiful apartment, to the gym, and all the programming that they offer here, it's really, like, it's a great place to be. It really is. Thank you. I only wish that I could participate in more of the events that go on here. Since moving, I've worked full time. I earned my driver's license. I saved enough money to buy a car. So, from being homeless to home is wonderful. Having safe, affordable housing has changed my life. And I'm even more grateful to have landed here at the Golden Meyer House in Newton. Thank you to the Healy Discr Dis ooh, sorry, Driscoll <laughs> administration and to all of you here who have helped pass this important bill. I wish for everyone to one day know the peace that I feel to have a place to call home. I hope this bill makes that possible for the others. Thank you. And now I'm pleased to welcome Shakita Farti up to close. Hi, I'm Shakita Barty. I am a public school teacher. I teach in the city of Boston. So as a VPS teacher, I've experienced housing insecurity and its impact both firsthand personally and secondhand via my students. For me, access to affordable housing would have meant that I could have raised my son in the same community that I was raised in. It would have meant consistency in his schooling, which we know is important for kids. And it would have meant spending more quality time with my son instead of juggling multiple jobs to pay rent. For my students, affordable housing means less naps during the school day. It means sharing a room with only their siblings, and it means eating a meal that doesn't need a microwave to be prepared. It means better social, emotional, and academic outcomes for our students. 
housing conditions, our learning conditions, and we can't expect our students to thrive if we don't first give them the conditions they need to survive. Having access to affordable housing would have allowed my son, my son to be a kid. And although it's too late for Markel, right here, right now, we are giving so many children their childhood back. And we are removing a layer of stress from educators who both personally and professionally deal with the impact of housing insecurity. In order for our students to do well, the people who spend so much time with them must also be able to do well. Thank you for listening. And I now... I now have the honor of reintroducing our great governor, Maura Healy. Thank you so much, Shakeda and Mercedes, um, for sharing your stories about, uh, about what this is about. Um, at this time, we are going to actually sign, right? So look, I know it's real, as they're coming up, I know it's really hot. Everybody just take a deep breath, and if you haven't bent your knees once, do it so you don't pass out. And we're going to make this official, but it was important enough that we, that we you know, took the time to have everybody heard this morning. So thank you very much, and the LG and I are going to move to sign it now. Let's do it.